guys, it's Curly here reporting again from the forest and today I want to share with you priceless relationship advice from this book called Attached. So I'll attach the book here. This is a book I've been reading and it has been life changing so far. So I really want to kind of review the book from my perspective and also share my own um, lessons but also what I got from the book. I haven't finished it, I haven't finished it totally yet but um, I will do that soon but I want to share already the lessons that I got from it and if you haven't read it, read it, it's so good. So in the book the main thing that the main kind of lesson is that we have three types, three <laughs> types of uh, attachment strategies, okay? And we all attach to other people differently. We have a secure attachment style, then we have anxious uh, attachment style, and then we also have avoidant attachment style. And what's the difference? Is that when we are securely attached, we tend to be okay with intimacy and closeness when we are anxiously attached we tend to be overthinking thinking you know why haven't they answered our message like going crazy after small things if the other person is not giving us enough validation we're constantly anxious that they will leave us or they will go somewhere or something will happen or something's wrong with us and if it's avoidantly attached, avoidant style is more of like, ooh, you know, too close, too much. Oh, they're not basically comfortable with um, closeness or intimacy because, and, and what I'm talking about is real intimacy, like emotional openness, right? Because they're afraid to get hurt. And I'll go into a little bit more. But all of us, we are one style. And what style we are really depends on what has happened in our life, um, our upbringing, um, the way the relationship with our parents, but also our relationships. What did we experience in the relationship? And uh, I'll give you a little example as well that, that's in the book that's really, really fascinating. So they do a test that they have a room and then they go into the room um, with a so a, a mom goes into the room with with a baby with their baby and then there's loads of toys and the baby goes and plays with the toys right and then the mom goes off from the room leaves the room and then guess what happens the child starts screaming and yelling because it wants his mommy right and and it doesn't care about the toys in that moment because the attachment figure who is the mom is now gone then the mom returns and then obviously the baby cries and stuff but then at one point it calms down and then it goes back to playing with the toys and basically what this test shows is that we actually need an attachment figure in our life and usually it's our parents so one of our parents and now when we're an adult we still need that attachment figure and that is usually some like our partner someone who we're in a relationship with okay and when we have a secure partner then we can go and explore and do all these things without um overthinking without going crazy without um all these things that a baby would do as well right without fear and the opposite of that is that when we don't have that person then we can feel like we can't really explore so it's basically the that is one part of the um, the research but another part is now as we as adults we tend to function the greatest and use our greatest potential when we have someone who is our partner who we have that attachment figure as a as that attachment figure and um now that attachment figure also now depends on what um attachment type they are okay let's just check the screen oh it's good um what attachment type they are because okay so the the the, the
the biggest danger in relationships, which a lot of people who are in dysfunctional relationships or feel it's very difficult, is because the, they are either anxiously attached or avoidantly attached and then they go together. So if an anxiously attached goes with an avoidantly attached, that's called the uh, anxious avoidant trap, which means that one person is now like, oh my God, I hope he's okay, you know, uh, checking up on them, like being like really thinking about the relationship, really kind of overthinking. The other person now is like, oh my God, this is too much. You're being too needy. This is like, you're not being enough. And then they play this dance, always have this gap between them and one becomes more anxious and the other one becomes like more and more an avoidant. So it's almost like the way we can heal and become a secure, securely attached partner, if we're not already, is that we have to actually get into a relationship with a securely attached partner who will validate us and who will um, calm us, basically. So 50% of people are um, securely attached, then 25 is anxiously, 20 is avoidantly, and then 5% are both anxious and avoidant. And how you know who you are, you can do a test. The test is in the book as well. Uh, and I'm sure you can find it online, but it's really, really interesting because if you're someone who's struggling with finding the right kind of partner, who's struggling in relationships, it could be potentially that you are, I'm guessing most likely anxiously attached, or you can be securely attached as well. But then the other person could be avoidantly attached or there could be a mismatch there. So the best way is that we actually want to find a securely attached partner. Now, if one is secure and let's say the other one is anxious, then the secure can basically give the security for the anxious person as well and validate them. And then they can then turn into a securely attached as well. So in a relationship, we can actually uh, change our attachment style. But the opposite can happen too. It can happen that we are securely attached and then we go together with anxiously attached or avoidantly attached and then we change into that as well. So let's say we're securely attached and we get into a relationship with an avoidant who is pushing us away and not okay with the closeness, then we can start feeling, okay, something's maybe wrong with us, like all these things. So it depends on a lot of factors. So my own, if I think about my relationships and my dating kind of history, um, if I, when I read that book, I was like, oh my God, it all makes sense now. And if I think back to my relationship, one of the relationships was differently, uh, the partner was either secure or anxiously attached. And I, back then, I think I was anxiously attached. So it was like a, a match, you know? But then I also got into a relationship which the partner was actually avoidant. So what happened was always this thing of me feeling like he's not giving me enough and him feeling like you're being too needy. And that is the main dynamic that happens in anxiously and avoidantly attached couples. And very rarely there are couples who are anxious, anxious or avoidant, avoidant because it's not, it's not like magnetic enough apparently because you don't opposite attract, right? And also whoever is uh, anxiously or avoidantly attached a secure partner can actually feel boring because it's not something they are used to and they feel like there's not enough you know so it's like when we choose a partner we have to actually make sure what attachment style they are so I really recommend getting this book or reading this book if you are on a journey of becoming a better self or becoming becoming a better partner whether you are in a relationship or whether you want to get into one and you're dating it is it is such a good book like I that it really opened my eyes and as I was reading it I was like oh my god and by the way when I did the test I'm sorry to announce but I am anxiously attached <laughs> and you know what I think I've always been but in one of my relationships I think I got into like I got being secure because I was validated and I was given everything that I needed and then the other relationship literally fucked me up and then I became even more anxious. So what happens in a dynamic where there's an anxiously attached and uh, avoidantly attached is that it's like there is a, in the book there's also like it shows this kind of danger zone. So let's say, as an example, uh, a person anxiously attached messages avoidant 
and for some reason the volume is not answering and you know then the anxious can be like oh my god what has happened why is he not answering something's wrong with me did i do something wrong and all these kind of ang anxious patterns come up but then when the when the voidant answers then the anxious is like ah oh, okay all is good and then they don't go into the danger zone but the danger zone is like when they don't and they they don't reassure the anxious the attached person with whatever it is and then they go into the danger zone and they literally can become a different person they can be a totally grounded normal person and then just because they're not being validated they can it's like an emotional pattern it's uh it's like a what's it called the attachment strategy gets reignited and in that moment the person loses like loses it and and gets all like obsessive and can literally like there's so many examples in the book as well where like their friends who were, who were writing it were totally normal but then they got together with this avoidant partner who triggered them super hard because they weren't giving the person the, the the validation and the security that they needed and then they became like this crazy person and they were like I don't know who I am anymore and that can happen with people who are anxious attached and basically it all comes down to the same test where the mom went in with the baby and in our childhood there were moments where our parent didn't um, give us what we needed, didn't meet our needs and then we had a coping mechanism and the coping mechanism either was we went super crazy and cried even more and, and tried to get their attention or we went like shut down and the shut down ones are the avoidant and the crazy ones are the anxious basically and then there were the secure ones who always got their needs met most of the time and they're like oh you know if mom doesn't come here she will come any second like almost like having the secure attachment so that if a person doesn't message back or doesn't do this they're like oh you know something must have happened and all is still good versus an anxious one is like oh my god something wrong i did something wrong the avoidant one is like well, the voidant one is the one who is, <laughs> who is doing that. But the voidant one is basically when someone someone's getting too close and they're like, whoa, 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 like I'm not comfortable with that because I'm afraid that when I get comfortable, I will get hurt. So I'm always keeping it at a distance, you know? So they're never really opening up. They're never really going full in because they're afraid that what if they leave? Um, and that's what happened as a baby that, you know, no one came and then they're just like, you know, try to basically it's a coping mechanism. So, so much of our stuff or our problems right now stem from our childhood. And But this attachment strategy is not just the childhood stuff. It's also to do with what kind of relationships we had, like I already explained. That whole topic for me is super, super fascinating because I'm all about, you know, becoming a better version of myself, but also in relationships and um and understanding myself like what do i really want what what do other people want how can i be a better partner um and this book has really really helped me and when i go dating as well before i was just like oh you know do i like the person and now i'm like is that person uh securely attached you know do they have a secure attachment style because if they have um, an anxious attachment style for example then okay this is a guy who's just peeing there um, so I'm just trying to make the video whilst he's you know doing his thing there but anyway so if the person is for example um, and anxiously oh, I just lost my thought right now there's a guy literally peeing there I don't want to film him and I won't film him but is yeah I'm sure that he's seeing me right now as well so he's like okay I'm here out with my dick and there's a woman recording a video anyway what was I saying now um, yeah I kind of lost my thought here anyway uh, hopefully he's not coming here um, this wood where I'm at right now is not really safe place um, anyway so what was I saying um, attachment styles okay I'm gonna close the video for a second and then I'm gonna continue. Okay, basically, the guy's still here. He's staring, he's not going away. I hope he's not a creep. He just put a cigarette on. But this video is turning to a totally different video. And I'm the kind of person, if I am focused on one thing, I cannot be focused on another thing as well. So I'm really trying to be like, okay, I wanna finish this video and tell you what I wanted to say. So I think the main point is, yeah, so dating wise, I no longer be like, okay, do I like this person? Of course, I look into that if I like this person, but at the same time, I'm also uh, looking into, you know, are they securely attached? Are they a good match for me? Because if they're avoidant and I know that I am anxious, then I can't I can't be with them because they would trigger the hell out of me and um, so it's so important that we actually um, become partners with 
someone who is securely attached okay very very important so i guess as to wrap this up i would just like to say find out what style you are and um when you do then you become more aware read about your style and understand how you actually work because now that i'm aware of that i can be understanding of that and soothe myself and and basically understand why am i doing why am I acting the way I do? And sometimes it's simply not just rational. So rationally, I can be like, okay, this is this is the rationality. But then emotionally, I can be triggered and I can go into these kind of emotional patterns that are just the patterns that are there and there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, and when we have a, a, a relationship dynamic, then we can only heal if the, if it's if it's a wound in the relationship then we can only heal it also within the relationship not outside of it so it's like some things we simply cannot heal on our own some things we can only heal in the relationships with other people because we are relational creatures so it's just about finding a secure partner and then becoming secure yourself and and understanding yourself better and that's what i got from this book and i'm super grateful because now i can make better choices when it comes to relationships and not choose the partners who are not compatible to me it's so important like we might have a, like a connection with someone but if we're not truly compatible and if we want something for long term there is no point for us to go with them you know we're gonna fuck ourselves up for a longer time it's like becoming more aware and and mature about the choices we make and it's not just like okay i like this person it's more about okay are they the right match for me like truly honestly are they so yeah this is what i wanted to share about this hopefully that was interesting to you um you know that really really changed um changed something in my mind after i read this book so it's called attached um and yeah hopefully you get to read this if you want to talk about any of this or if you want to uh, do one-to-one -one coaching with me a uh, link there's a link below as well to my website you can always contact me make sure you subscribe share this video with anyone who needs to listen to this and i'll see you again another time my name is curly and bye bye